Hi, then. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday Notary Titans. My name is Bill Soroka. I'm the founder of notarycoach.com and the Sign and Thrive Notary Training Course and Community. I'm here with my fabulous co-host, Carol Ray, founder of Notary 2 Pro. Carol, how's it going today? Uh, are you asking if I'm excited about anything? I, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> <laughs> what are you excited about? Oh my God, I can't even tell you. We've been doing this for, I've forgotten the dates, but like 11 plus years, right? I started this, this journey at the age of 66, this notary to pro thing. And we have finally come into the modern world. We have hired a company who is doing all of the things that my poor daughter has been doing 12 hours a day for years now, which is to send out receipts for new students, send out welcome letters, uh, work on the tests, send out certificates and congratulations letters. And all of that is being automated and students are no longer having to wait a couple of days for their certificates. It's immediate when they pass the exams. We've changed the way we're doing the exams, which is going to really make sure that they're learning, really learning, and not just remembering and answering questions and then they forget, you know. Um, and just so many things that I'm excited about. It's also going to allow us to have a, um, like I can go on Zoom and with students and see their documents and all that stuff, but we're also gonna have something called the Notary Roundtable, which is gonna be for our students or have a lot of questions that we can answer. We can have like once a week or twice a week meetings where they could come and join us and, and just pump my brain until it's empty until the next time we have another meeting. It's so exciting. I just can't even tell you because it's going to be so great, not just for my, my girls, my staff and myself and my husband, but for our students. So I'm, I'm just beyond the moon about it. Awesome. Well, congratulations. That's been a long time coming. I'm so excited for all of you because I know you put so much work into those uh, every, the everyday help of your, your students. So congrats, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. Right, that's definitely something to be excited about. And then Laura Buer, founder of CoachMeLaura.com. Laura, thanks for being here. What are you excited about? Well, lots of great things every day, something new and exciting happening. Uh, but I'd like to highlight that uh, I'll be... Um, part of three different events coming along uh, your way. So just to kind of put them in your mental calendar, we have an e-meetup coming on August 22nd, and that's at 9 a.m. That's a Saturday morning. And it will be about, um, you know, working during the pandemic. And what are we doing to keep ourselves safe? What are we doing to keep our clients safe? How have we changed our process? Um, and so we'll have a lot of people sharing about how they are doing that uh, for those of us who are working and for those of us who are like, well, I want to work, but I'm not sure, you know, how to do that. What do I need to do? So that's the uh, e-meetup coming August 22nd. And then September 19th will be our next skill builder. And this one will be about being fidelity approved. So if you've been wondering about how do I do that? What is that? Will it help me? Why should I do it? What's the difference? Uh, I'm going to be talking about that at the next Skill Builder on September 19th. And there's nowhere to sign up for that yet, so don't worry. Uh, you haven't missed anything. Uh, and then finally, uh, the event of the year, the Notary Symposium is happening on National Notary Public Day, November 7th. And it's virtual live this year. And I only have about 40 seats left. We are almost sold out. So if that's something you're thinking about, don't wait too long, because I fully expect us to be full uh, shortly. And so those are all of the great things going on in my world. Well, that's a lot for sure. I'm excited too. Congrats on Symposium. I knew that would go fast. I'm excited for you. And I'm excited to be a part of it as well. Uh, for me, um, you know, I've got always got lots of stuff to be excited about but instead what i just want to do is take a minute and just remind everybody we are in a huge boom right now for refinances purchases this is the time to be busy end of month is absolutely insane 
for many of us, the beginning of the month is pretty insane too. Right now we're in this big first week of the month and it kind of feels like last week. It's yeah. really, really busy. But guys, don't forget, right now is not the time, like I said in my email, to sit on our haunches. We've got, we must cultivate relationships right now. You must build in some way of communicating so you stay in touch with your customers so the phone never stops ringing even down the road. So this is the time right now, if it's slowed down for you, reach out, build those bridges and keep your business going. All right, so let's jump in. Guys, don't forget the, the rules for the questions. Raise your hand. I love that so many people have already raised your hand. If you don't know how to raise your hand on Zoom, please just type it into the chat window and someone in there will help. Actually, Laura's really good at this too. Laura, you wanna guide them through this real quick? Just click on the participants icon It'll bring everybody up and it, in the middle of the screen on the, uh, it'll have a uh, raise hand. In the middle there, it should have on the left, I think, raise hand. Participants, let me go all the way down. Ah, we have a lot of participants already. <laughs> Holy Moses. Let me see if I can mix my chat chat with. There's a way to do You know that. what, I probably, I made you a co-host so you made your Oh, so I'm not seeing stuff the yeah. way I normally do. But for the rest of you, you should see the little hand, raise hand, about the middle of the participants. And if you have any problems with it, just type it into the chat window. You are in a very close community that loves to help people. There's going to be somebody that has real quick, easy instructions for you to walk you through that. So let's dive in now. And we are going to start. Remember the, um, the format. Tell us what state you're in, ask your question. Leonard, you wanna kick us off? Sure, how are you guys doing today? Can Excellent. you hear me, Bill? How are you? That's a good, good. Um, First of all, Laura, thanks for taking all my uh, emails and questions and things like that. I really appreciate that. Uh, you guys are such a, a wealth of knowledge. Um, so a couple of real quick questions. One is on the Michigan Patriot Act, sometime I notice with the title companies or the lenders, when they send the paperwork in, it says, one form of ID required. Now, normally it, it says you should have two. And I guess the Patriot Act is more of a federal uh, document. What do you guys do for that? I mean, I circle the one form of ID required so that they make sure that they know if I do one form that that's what's on the document. But do you normally go with two pieces of ID even though it says one form? That's a great question. So the cool thing about the Patriot Act form is that is generated because of a piece of federal legislation called the Patriot Act. And the lenders are the ones that are responsible for um, meeting those requirements. So if they have already done whatever they need in the back and they only need one form, that's what they're telling you. All they need is one form of ID and that's all they're expecting from you. As a notary public, you don't have to take two forms of ID, hardly ever, unless a document is requ specifically requesting it. So in your role as a loan signing agent, that Patriot Act will guide you along the way there. Also, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead, Leonard. No, you go ahead, I'm sorry. No, uh, Laura, did you have it, or Carol, did you wanna jump in and add anything to that? I oh, just wanna, one. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay, I just wanna say that um, the two variations I see frequently, one says one and one says two, you do what it says. Okay. And when it's two, they'll give you a list uh, typed small at the top of about 10, 12 different documents. And they're right. not really ID documents. They might be the utility bill, a voter registration, a W-2, one of those. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's fine. And you would put it in the other. Okay. But that's not for notary. That's for signing agent work, right? Remember, you're wearing your signing agent hat when you're filling out that Patriot Act form. So what, that that's a good I point, um, Laura, because when I do that, I normally put on there like notary signing agent, not notary. Do you take the notary off and just leave it signing agent? What do you do? I put signing agent. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. what I was going to add. I tell my students, so you're not acting as a notary, so always put the title as signing agent. Okay. All right. And then my other quick question was, Jason, I looked at your presentation that you guys did last. Uh, I looked at the presentation that Jason did last Saturday. Jason. Yeah. I thought it was great, but I couldn't get through it because it was a lot of information. It just takes a while to soak through it. But I, the question I have is, if you have any questions relative to the presentation, who can we contact if we have any questions about what's going on? Great question. So that was at the end. I'm going to put his website, and he has a contact form on there. Okay. That's Jason Thompson. It's robotres.com, robotres.com. Okay. And Got he's it. Getting lots of questions, so feel free to hit him up. He's ready for you. 
All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Leonard. Nancy Huffaker, thanks for being here. You want to unmute, tell us your state, and ask your question. Hey, I'll say hi, too. Um, I'm in Florida, and I am starting last month was my first month, and I got a total of 25 signings done, so I feel pretty good about it. Um, now I'm at the point, I am a technophobe. We got to start there, okay? <laughs> and it's 105 degrees outside. I tried scanning in the back of the car, and the papers got so wet from my sweat dripping on them that it was just a debacle. But I have lost two signings because I couldn't print. Um, and Bill, at one point you said something about you have a, you can get a deal or there's a business. I've been on every website, every website for all the office stores trying to find something that's less than 45 cents a copy. Is there something out there where you can stop on the road and print? Well, you definitely want to be very careful doing that, of course. Remember, uh, security of the documents mm -hmm. is of utmost importance. Right. So that being said, there are ways that you can, and there are some companies that provide more security. But at 45 cents a page, you're, you're going to be paying them for the signing. So yeah. I don't really need it. Um, I that last week on a reprint. <clears throat> it wasn't fun. No, definitely not. Office Depot, I hear, is a good one. Here's what you want to make sure, guys. You want to make sure that whoever you're printing on wipes their machines. Okay. These, these huge corporate printers, they have uh, hard drives on them that remember all that paperwork, every copy they make. So you've got to have a company that wipes that. And you've got to know that there's a risk involved with that, too. So it's like worst case scenario to do this. Um, but there's companies like UPS stores where... Most of the employees are notaries. They get criminally background checked. They wipe their machines every night. So the, if you're going to have a little bit of risk, you can mitigate it that way. There are specials that they do. If you do the pre, uh, prepaid uh, printing option, sometimes you can get them as low as two cents per page. It's usually between five and seven cents per page if the individual store participates in it. They're franchises. So sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Now, what I would definitely recommend more than anything is if, because I know you're in a rural area, you've got to drive 45 minutes minimum. Get anywhere. To be anywhere. And, and it's rare that there is a FedEx or a UPS drop. I've got to drive an hour and a half the other way to drop them. So here's the thing, though. There are notaries probably on this call that have mobile setups in much hotter environments than you're in uh -huh. that have found a, way to, find a way to make this work. So I would solicit as many people if they're on this call if they're in sign and thrive wherever they might be and get some solutions in, in place for possibility maybe it's not now maybe it's a goal that you have for two months down the road after we get a few more signings under your belt whatever it might be but we can we can find a way to make this work laura carol do you have any suggestions on that as well well i agree with you i was going to suggest that it's probably a lot cheaper for her to set up the ability to print uh, in her car. I did it. We did it in Arizona. And we I took the cartridges out of the, the back of the car. Okay. <laughs> we used to take the cartridges out because of the, um, you know, the heat would yeah. hurt them. I'm sorry. This phone is, I can't stop it. Uh, also, I'll tell you what, um, I know that the, I, I just learned this because we didn't do it. I used to stop at hot spots and print and stuff. Oh my God, at 118 degrees. I'd sit in the back seat and swelter to death. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of people now, they're, t they're taking the printers and stuff with them and literally printing them out as they go to the signings. They're get sitting at people's tables and printing out the documents while they're going through them. Uh, in people I, like I, you. I, I'm sorry. Hold on. I only one, only one person can talk at a time on Zoom. So Sorry. Yeah, sorry. So I'm sorry, Carol. Go ahead. No, that's all. I was just going to say that was new to me. I learn things all the time from my students, probably more than I teach them. And but part of it is that nowadays, literally, these people that are living in rural areas and they're getting so much work. Oh, my God, that they are literally carrying the printers in, get small printers. I bought I paid one. I paid sixty nine dollars for one that was great. It was fast. It was an HP. It went in my car. And um, that was years ago, but still, you can carry it into the signing with you and print them out right there. Just use their electricity and say, hey, I'm sorry I was on the road, but I'm here. <laughs> as long as they get it done and you're sweet and friendly, 
That's all they care about. The personality goes a long way in those situations, yep. for sure. Would that be would that be one of those I have a printer like that, but it's one drawer. So would that be one of those emergency situations where you could print all legal? Well, if you have page separator, which I highly recommend for those that don't have the dual tray. Mm -hmm. I used it for years. It's inexpensive. It's a software that you own. You don't pay by the rent the month. And then all you do is it prints out, it divides the paper, letter folder, and a legal folder. You go to print the legal folder and you put in legal paper, then you'd switch out with one tray, you put in the letter size paper and print everything that's in the letter size folder and there you go. Then how do you- And it even gives you a report that tells you how to put them together. Okay. Yeah, you gotta get the pro plan in order to get that report. Back together. <laughs> There's a module in that in Sign and Thrive with the link as well. Yeah, thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks, Nancy. All right, Arlene, Francis, Gaines, thanks for being here. You want to unmute. Tell us what state you're in and ask your question. Hi, guys. I'm in Florida also. And um, I just didn't have a question, but I wanted to give a celebration if that was okay. Absolutely, please. I officiated my first wedding yesterday on the beach at sunset. All right, awesome. It was so fantastic. And the couple, uh, the group let me take a picture so that I could put it on my Google site of me officiating the wedding. And um, they're going to give me a review. And I followed up today, you know, we have to mail their license in. So I did it certified and I took a picture of the certified receipt so that they could track it to make sure that, you know, they don't, I don't want them to call me in three weeks and ask me where it is. Right. And I kept the receipt so I can track it as well. Um, I did take the non-boring wedding officiants. All right. Yeah, this couple didn't want to do anything except get the wedding done. They had a few short vows because they're going to have a celebration later. But they were so, I, I had tears in my eyes. Just their own vows were so precious. Oh. And I didn't think I would ever do weddings until I took that unboring wedding officiant. So um, the next wedding, I'll see if I can talk the couple into doing that process. But um, I am getting more reviews. You know, it, it felt weird to ask for them, but now I'm feeling really confident asking for it, texting them the link or emailing them the link. And then I wanted to show you, I don't know if this will show, I got, this is my logo and I got thank you postcards. It doesn't show up because of your background. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. But I just did, got my thank you postcards today, so I'll start sending those. But I guess my question is, should I put a thank you postcard in the package that goes back to the title company, or should I only send one to the company, the agency that hires me, if I'm hired okay. by Great question. Let's talk about that first, and then I want to dive a little deeper into your wedding officiant stuff, too. So when you... if you, if you're getting hired by a signing company, you should probably not send a thank you card to the title company that is their client because that looks like you're trying to poach their client. And even if you're not, perception is reality in those situations. And it happens all the time. So signing companies have like a zero tolerance for it. You know, if it looks like you're trying to steal their client or their escrow officer says, hey, look what she sent. I think she's trying to get me, you know, then you're then you lose that business. So it's not worth the risk. If you're going to send a thank you card anywhere, send it to the signing company. You know, don't sign, send one every time. I think it kind of dilutes it if you send every signing. But every now and then or once a month, send them a thank you. You can send it to the signers. You know, those types of thank you cards you can send. Now, let's dive in a little bit too, real quick, Arlene, um, because there's a lot of questions. In Florida, you get to, part of your uh, commission as a notary public is to be a wedding officiant, correct? It, oh, there she is. You kind of disappear every now and then in your background. I love that background. Okay, so um, for anybody who's on the call, if you're in Florida, that's one of those things that comes with your commission. In other states, there's a couple other states that do it. Otherwise, you have to become a wedding officiant. Whether, however your state says you need to become a wedding officiant, but it still ties in really perfectly with being a notary public. So there's a lot of notaries that work the gig as a wedding officiant, either on the side or a lot of wedding officiants are wedding officiants and then notaries, that's what they do on the side, or notaries 
do their main business as a notary and then they do a, a wedding officiant every now and then. So that's just how awesome this business is. It has so many different opportunities that way. So congratulations on your first uh, officiant right on the beach too. That's fantastic. I can't wait to see where else you go with that. Tom from Austin, Texas. Come on in, unmute and ask your question. Tom from Austin, Texas. Um, going to be starting a loan signing, hopefully about a month. I'm brand new to that, but 15 years in real estate and insurance. But my question is an equipment question. Um, I've been looking all over, deciding what kind of printer I want to get. I was looking at a, a Brother 5900, which is an all-in-one. So I have the scanner in there. And uh, comparing the prices to that, to going out and buying a scanner uh, and a printer, a, you know, dual pay, a dual tray printer, something like that, becomes more expensive. Um, my other question is, I just wonder what anybody else is doing out there, what they would think is best. My other question is anybody using a specific e-fax company? Because when you're doing this, you're going to be sending a lot of docs and receiving a lot of docs. Has anyone found any that's really inexpensive or makes sense? Great. Uh, so let's just real quick, I'll answer this. And I know Carol's going to have some great opinions and Laura will as well. Um, fax backs, nobody does fax backs anymore. That's just scan yeah. backs. So yeah. you, just, you just scan it and then you send them via email or upload in the portal. Uh, so most of the time, you're not gonna have a whole lot of those e-fax companies. I think I used to use GoDaddy, it was four bucks a month. I just never ended up using it, so it was a complete waste of money. Uh, for printers, um, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, I've got my suggested printers, but I love the Brother brand. I personally do not like the all-in-one printers because anytime you go all-in-one, something gets sacrificed, and most of the time it's the scanner. So you're going to get maybe 10, 15 pages in there, and then it's going to break down. You're going to have to replace the whole thing, or it costs more to fix those things, and that does just buy a new one sometimes. So I like the Brother HL5200 dual tray as the printer, and then I like the Brother ADS2000 as the scanner. Carol, I know you love HP. Can you tell us a little bit about the HP products that you like? Um, well... I just love HPs. We've had them for years and years and years. And but it's a you know it's an individual thing. Um, I do want to talk about. I forgot what Elsie was asking about the um, scanning and faxing. Okay, I do have something to say, and I wanted you to know, everybody to know too, especially my graduates, that within the next thirty days, we're hoping to have it by the end of the month, uh, the end of August that I am redoing in the entire courses to bring it up because I've talked about things like faxes, which we don't do anymore. So we're updating it. I do this every couple of years. So don't even think about faxes. We don't see people even asking for them anymore, uh, but you need to really concentrate on the scanning. And I have talked about this program so many times, but if you haven't heard it before, Bill, Sorry, my husband's fell and fallen asleep. I don't want anybody to hear him snoring. No, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to speak to you rabble. Anyway. To liven up the conversation, I guess. That's <laughs> <laughs> so funny. He'd been working his butt off all morning. But anyway, so our records, uh, just a synopsis of it. It's a great program. Uh, it, you, it allows you to send encrypted documents as easy as scanning them, uploading them to their system, typing in the email recipient of the person who they're telling you to send it to. Within seconds, they're gone. That other person at the lender, signing service, whatever, they get a notification that you have sent them an email. There's documents, they download them. They've come completely encrypted. You're safe. You can never just sit down and email a package of documents uh, because if somebody gets into it and somebody's identity is stolen, they're coming after you. So ourrecords.com. If you are a notary to pro student or graduate, there's a discount. That's it. I love it. Thank you. Did that answer your question, Tom? Sure did. All right. Thanks for being here. Juliet, thank you for being here. You want to jump on, unmute, tell us what state you're from, and ask your question. Hello. Hi. Oh, I don't have a camera. I'm sorry. I'm not as fancy. <laughs> That's okay. No worries at all. We can hear you just fine, though. Yes. Well, you guys did touch bases on the printer 
um, situation. I had the wrong entire concept of how the printer is supposed to work. I thought that the printer was supposed to take each page based on its size automatically. You know, like if some documents were legal versus the letter, it takes them accordingly. And I, I, I was schooled by someone that that's not, that's not true. Is that, is that correct? No, it's actually the exact opposite. That's why we recommend the dual tray printers that hold both letter and legal size. Now, it's not as simple as just, oh, okay, I'll plug this printer in and it's going to work. It's, there's a lot more to it. So uh, the number one, you probably want some Adobe uh, Acrobat reader that reads the documents correctly. You'll want the right drivers from the printer loaded onto your computer and all of that has to communicate to each other but it will automatically select. So if you got it all set up right, it will go through a loan document package and it will print out on letter size and legal size as per the file. So when it's all said and done, you'll get a stack that's just intermixed with all the letter sizes. Okay, size so it's, it's a matter of installing other software to get it to pull the papers according to size? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It just depends. Uh, it, the different programs just have to communicate to each other. Right. Well, um, okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm still a little confused now. Um, I was told also that if I wanted to interchange, I just simply switch on the, 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 the printer, what size I want to print on now. No, so I'm, I'm, I must need a, a cross course in printing. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, <laughs> when it, it, if it's all working correctly, you don't need to tell it to do anything. It's, yes. one, little, it's one little checkbox and it does its thing. The problem is getting it set up. So you just need tech support. So if you buy the brother, you call brother and say, here's what I'm trying to do now. Okay. Not okay. Always that easy. Yes. Uh, but I will tell you that sometimes there's some challenges with Apple products and mm -hmm. the Adobe and the uh, brother. Sometimes there's not, some people have no problems at all. So it really, it can be a real local issue. So if you have a computer guy, they can walk you through it. If you're part yeah. of Sign and Thrive, we've got a great video in the Facebook group that'll walk you through the setup there. Yes. And then well, YouTube I'm, is full of them too. I'm completely new at the whole loan signing situation. I haven't even had my own, uh, my first assignment yet. And that's probably because I'm coward and really dragging my feet. And I didn't get a printer on purpose because I know once I get a printer, I better get the ball yeah. rolling. So, but now I, I realized that I'm probably going to have to start with signing agents. I mean, the signing um, companies and go out that way is more than likely I might not, uh, get an offer from a title company. Well, I'm, see, I'm in North Carolina, so I'm an attorney state. But shockingly, just last week, I got a text from a law office right up the street from me, and I quickly declined. I mean, someone told me I shouldn't decline <laughs> because I wasn't ready. I mean, can you imagine? I just had the fright of my life. <laughs> <laughs> the universe is giving you signals. It's ready. I know. So anyway, I'm not going to hold you up. The last question I wanted to do um, with you is about grant deed. I did when I went and buy a, a, a course from someone and there was a grant deed in there, but the course was so expensive that I couldn't continue the payment. So I dropped out of it quickly just so I won't have to continue. And there was a grant deed and some of it was partially filled out and it's been haunting me since. My question to you is, uh, does a grant deed always appear in, in all the packages? Which package does it uh, appear in and why? Well, a grant deed is just one of the several types of deeds that you might run across. Grant deed is not all that common. Usually, like on cash transactions, you'll see warranty deeds. On loans, you're going to see deeds of trust or a mortgage, depending on your state. I think North Carolina. Oh, okay. Deed of trust. There could be... Um, any types of those documents. Here's what's awesome about our role though. We're not attorneys and we don't advise on how to fill those things out. Our job yeah. is to verify the identity, make sure that the yeah. document is filled out. If it's not, we let the signer call the lender or call the closing agent to get that worked out. And then we notarize the document. So we don't have to stress out too much about that. But here's what I would recommend real quick, Julia, before you jump in, is I would highly, highly recommend jumping into a training course, either Carol Ray's at Notary to Pro, which Carol, you have, uh, Carol, how much is Notary to Pro for the whole kit and caboodle? For everything, including the lifetime entrance into our graduates website and mentoring, which is primarily me, uh, $225. One time, right? 
one time. There's no other. You take the test as many times as it takes you to pass. I don't, I hate that. Well, you didn't pass the first time, so it's 50 bucks. I hate that kind of stuff. So no, it's 225. That's it. That's it. So that's 225 bucks or sign and thrive, which I really, I priced it the way I did. So yeah. everybody can afford training at $33 a month. Plus you get a seven day free trial. So yeah. that training is going to be, that's that extra confidence that you need right now, Juliet, yes. to say yes instead of no, is this, is your training. Once you have that and you have a mentor like Carol, me or Laura, you're going to say yes, say yes to the signing because you're going to be able to take it. You yes. have enough support. For I that. definitely, I, I'm going to make this the last bit. I definitely need one-on-one -on -one because even though the course that I, I took, some of the forms that you're filling out, like when you when you went the ID, there's an ID form where you fill out the person's I, identification and all that. And in the, in, in the course, they didn't check the box. Do you check the box? And do you check it with an X? Of so which ID it is, or do you put a check mark? <laughs> okay, Julia, you need to get on the phone with Carol or I. Okay, I'm like, sorry. No, that's okay because this is this is awesome, and it's not that bad. Yes. It's not that bad. Right now, you've got just enough just enough to drive you crazy. But when we get in there and you see the repetition, it's not going to matter because anybody you're going to see so many different documents. I hope I'm not the only one this way who just no, no, not and at just all. Haven't done. No. I have to interject here. Yeah. Because we've talked about it, the three of us, uh, myself, Laura, Bill, we've talked about the three of us, and, and we, we, we believe yeah. that we're the bomb. Uh, we all... Hold on, I can't, I can't People move. People are talking. <laughs> Wait a couple of days. Do the okay. What? What? Hey, who's ever talking? Can you mute yourself? Linda, Linda Miner, can you mute yourself? Sure. Thank you so much. Okay. okay what so. I was going to say is that the, between the three of us, we really have elevated things. Um, I, I mean, I've always thought of myself as the foundation. It's the hand walk, a hand hold. This you do this, and then you do this, and then you do this. When you want to really get out there and market yourself and learn how to make more money and get yourself out there, Bill's a bomb. If you want to learn everything about general notary work, you've got to sign up with Laura and go into her library. But whatever you do, wherever you go, you can't go into this blind. You're going to hurt yourself and people if you don't get good training. Absolutely. So wherever you decide, do your research. Also, I want to add something for anybody who's in need of a printer right now. I almost forgot about this, but this is a pretty good deal. There is a fellow in Texas that we heard about who refurbishes uh, HP, I think it's a 4500, it's a dual tray printer, and they're great, and he's selling them for $175, you pay the shipping. If anybody needs it and is interested, I love HPs personally, um, write to Lori, at notarytopro.com and she'll send you his information and then it's up to you. But we heard about him and we've got 12 students so far that have purchased it and no problems. Carol, how does Lori spell her first name again? L-O-R-I. Perfect. I've got that in the chat window for you guys. Oh, wonderful. Thank Julia, you. Julia, did, uh, did we answer your questions? Yes, I, I am sitting here listening to her. Yes, absolutely. I, I, I know I need one on one and I, I will think about um, doing that, even though I've had quite a bit of uh, uh, training. It's just that sometimes when people are training, they don't realize that they're leaving out the layman's term questions. They, they're so advanced that I'm like, whoa, 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 right there, I have a question, but I can't get an answer because they're not live. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. Okay, but thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Guys, this really. Um highlights the importance of a mentor or a coaching call. Sometimes we need that little nudge. We need a little kick in the, in the tail to push us over the edge, to give us the courage to say yes to the signing. It is terrifying to take your first signing. Don't let anybody tell you differently. It will eat you up. But once you get past that first one, then the second one, your whole life changes. It's, it's like, oh, You've got this. And in these trainings that we're talking about with Notary to Pro and Sign and Thrive, it's not 
philosophy. It's not a theory of loan signings. It's practical. This is how you do. Like in my course, I teach you the same thing I do all day, every day. So you're going to get in the signings. You're going to say, oh yeah, this is just like my training. Oh, that's a little different, but I know how to handle it now. That's the power of having mentor or a training that is real life that way. Excellent job, guys. Now, Carol, Laura, should we give some stuff away at the end of this call? I think I'm going to give away, I finally just got some more books in. So I'm going to give away three of the Sign and Thrive books signed and inscribed for anybody who wants them. Carol, do you want to give away anything today? Uh, not today because we're going to have a special promotion with our graduates. Love it. Awesome. Sorry. Laura, are you still on? Laura? I'm muted. Oh, so I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Hi, let's put out an LBP. I love it. All right. We're going to give away one lifetime access to Laura Buer Presents. That's the general or the specialty notary work uh, training. If you're looking for super specific training, that is the one for you. We're going to give away one lifetime membership and three sign and write books at the end of this call. All right. Cool. Oh, uh, Bill? Yeah. I'm sorry, but you know what? I forgot. We did decide we were going to give a free course this time. Oh, beautiful. Even better. So we're going to give away one free Notary to Pro course, which we already talked about the value of that a few minutes ago. So we're going to have some really cool prizes today. All right, guys. Um, just a quick reminder. We got lots of people who are unmuting and interrupting. Please keep yourself on mute if at all possible. Vanessa D., thank you so much for being here. You want to unmute, tell us what state you're in, and ask your question. Oh, yeah. I guess you need to know where to sign up, huh? Hi, everyone. I'm from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Hi. Um, I had a question last week about modifications that you guys answered, and I decided to sign up for one of the mods. So I did it yesterday, and it went fine. My only question was because I did not see this in the packet, but I kind of believe that I saw it in the training video for signing Th Thrive. Yeah. The last um, document was a certificate of residence but it didn't look like it applied to the client, like, cause it, their name wasn't there for them to print their name. You know what, Vanessa, I don't know. I'd have to see that document. So maybe you and I can shoot me a text. Do you have my cell phone number? Uh, I do not. All right. It's all over the course material, just so you know. So make sure you're getting the full experience there. And it is, are you ready? Yep. 602-309. Zero seven zero six guys. If you're listening to this, write that number down and save me to your phone. I'm at if via text message, you can hit me up anytime. So 602 309 0706. And then my yeah. only other comment that I have is that your candid responses work superbly. Oh, yeah, yes. Oh, good. I'm so glad to hear that. Yep, and that's it. Okay, well, thanks. Thanks for being here. Thank you. All right, we'll talk to you later. To Miriam, thank you so much for being here. You wanna unmute, tell us what state you're in and ask your question. Um, good afternoon. Hi. Uh, Chicago, Illinois. I'm hoping to see if I can get some um, mentors or help from Chicago or from Illinois to kind of maybe shadow the paperwork of Illinois because I know a lot of people um, are from different states. So I don't know if I need help specifically from Illinois because I have yet to take my uh, first signing. Okay, awesome. So uh, what we're going to do here is this way. If anybody's in Illinois that would like to connect with Tamarian and maybe help coach her through it there, please post it into the chat. And Tamarian, you watch the chat. If you even want to type in your email address so people have a direct way to connect with you, awesome. And the other thing I'm going to offer this, and maybe Carol and Laura can talk a little bit about it too, is even though that feels safe and comfortable and what you want to do, you want somebody local, you want somebody who's going to have the specific documents for your state, you do not need that to thrive in this industry. At some point, you've got to practice, like I know you're in Sign and Thrive, you have access to all those documents, all that course material. It's pretty standardized. Even though every loan lender is different, every signing company is different, every title company is different, you're going to find a rhythm in that. And you have to trust the people who came before you. There is going to be a rhythm that you're going to get. And as you practice this, 
you're going to get to a point where not a single document that comes across the table is going to throw you off your game. You just have to get in the game first. Carol, what do you got to say? I, I really tell my students, please don't even think about shadowing somebody for, for one thing. It's, it's not good at this time. Consumer protection is a big thing. Uh, their information shouldn't be shared with anyone at the table unless they're given permission by the signers. Number two, I have seen so many of my graduates that will come back that said at some point in time they have shadowed someone. Oh, this, this person has been doing it for 15 years and I went with them. But how come you tell me the issue an oath and they didn't do it? And, and, and how come they had all of their forms filled out and they did all of their stamping and their signing on their notar uh, notarial certificates? before they ever got there, but it saved a lot of time while they were there. And I'm like, it's illegal. Uh, I have more, I spend more time undoing with students who have shadowed someone than I do anything else. No, you can't do that. And this is why. So I, I say, don't do it. I, I hate it when I hear that they've been following somebody. Unless they're a notary pro graduate, then it's okay. I love that you brought that up. And I just want to say to guys, what Carol just spoke to goes for mentors. It goes for anybody that you're shadowing, anybody, not even just in this business, anywhere. You want to be more selective. I see posts all over the Facebook groups. Does anybody want to be my mentor? Be more selective in your mentors. Choose people with the results, the commitment to integrity, the commitment to education that will match your values because just because they say yes does not mean they're the one that you want to learn from. Laura, you look like you're about to jump in there too. Yeah, I, um, I agree with what you said regarding more formalized, you know, mentoring and, and giving advice about how to do something. But what I do want to say is the connection with other people in your area uh, is invaluable in terms of just having somebody else who can connect and understand, you know, what you're doing in your area, since we are in different states. And I'm in California, so, you know, I don't trudge through the snow. Um, there are things I don't have experience with, but if you're with another notary who does that, then you can talk about how you deal with those things. And I think there are some things, not notary law specific or loan signing specific, but just in terms of industry and, uh, the physicality of where you live and how you deal with traffic and all of those things. It is great to be connected with people that are in your area dealing with the same things that we might not be able to share with you. So uh, if anybody offered to connect with you, I'd be doing it. Yeah, definitely. Excellent. Did that help to Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Let me know when you get your first signing. All right, let's do uh, Liz's iPhone. You want to go ahead and unmute and tell us what state you're in and ask your question. Good morning. I'm in California, and I love this conversation because it's right where I'm at. I'm completely brand new. haven't done my first signing. Trying to make sure every single I is dotted and T is crossed and right printer, and do I have the apps? So I'm almost afraid like to go out there because I'm like everybody else. Am I fully ready? Am I I want to really be ready. So my question is kind of twofold. One is how do you really get started? Who do you sign up with? I feel like I listen to a lot of things where people are doing great at it, but I'm like, okay, but how do you actually, what companies, how do you sign up with those companies? Um, what apps do I need to make sure that I have on my computer so that I can print everything out correctly? Um, that's where I kind of feel frozen is that I guess you call that marketing or the, yeah. That's a great question. So Liz, whose course are you in? I took Carol's and I, I loved it. And I talk with Barbara often, ask her tons of questions. She's, she's truly amazing. <laughs> I can call her sometimes three times in a row. I'm like, one more question. What about that? Right. Yeah. Well, and Carol does a, a good job of supplying a, a list. And then I'll let Carol talk, speak to that. Because I know there's a part on the graduate section that speaks to this. Liz, have Barbara you just told me the, about it. Have you been into the graduates website? I have. There's a, definitely a lot of information there. I'm kind of looking around all of it, and uh, sometimes there's where I think I've signed up, but it, it doesn't. It's not really specific. I feel a little lost sometimes on it. 
you need to go through, call us, but you need to go through panning for gold. There's steps and it's going to be, you should have gotten a, a congratulations letter with steps. We have a list of 125 four and five star rated companies. These are companies I worked with for years. They love our graduates. They're hiring them with no experience at all. Work that list, but call us. We'll give you some more tips. Okay. Barbara, okay. especially, she's a marketing person. Okay. Okay. And all what right. else suggest that, you know, when you're getting started, like you, I love that you talk about page separator because I don't have the dual trays. Um, is that an app that you download like onto your, your computer or does it go onto your printer? No, you put it onto your computer and I'll oh. show you how to work it. I, I, it's so easy. It's great. And that's a discount to you as a, as a uh, graduate. And I'd love to also connect with people in California. I'm in Roseville and um, I keep like kind of Facebooking and doing different social media stuff, but I haven't really heard of, you know, I think it's good to have this kind of support and it'd be nice. I agree with people in your area. Have you seen the elites list? Go in there because everybody, all of our graduates are listed by zip. Oh, okay. See if you can pull some people up near you. I know that there are some. Okay. And try it. Laura's wonderful at this, of setting up these meetup groups and putting people together. And I've been encouraging people. I have groups, I have about six groups now around the country that have started forming together because of Laura's uh, information and, you know, enthusiasm about this. Great. Well, thank you guys, all of you so much for your time and how much you put into all of us. I know I truly appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate you being here. This is a great business, guys. So in this, for those who maybe aren't dialed into a course or a community yet, this really highlights the importance and the value of that. Usually when you get a course like with Sign and Thrive, you get lots of resources, Know the Reach to Pro, lots of resources for how to build relationships with signing companies. It's not just all about Snapdocs. It's not all about signing order. Those are great, but there's so much more. And if you're not getting dialed into a community, you're really missing out on all of these resources. There really is plenty of business out there for everyone out there. So if your phone's not ringing and dinging, get dialed in. That's what we're here for. Uh, oh, let me lower your hand. Celicia Young-Jones, thank you for being here. You want to unmute. Unmute. Hey, everybody, and uh, good afternoon from the safe Jacksonville, Florida. We escaped the hurricane, so I'm good right. for that. I had one quick thing that I just learned today in talking to my SEO people, and this is sort of a thing that I didn't know because I'm trying to, you know, get the website and get out there on everything, and in some places, I'll go www.rainbownotarynuptials.com, and in some places, I'll go https colon slash slash. Whatever your website is, it needs to match across the board. So I'm, I'm going everywhere and getting rid of the www because my website does not have that. So whatever you have on your website, be consistent across the board. And I'm going back to places, you know, so for the backlinks like uh, Thumbtack and Yelp and every place, Wedding Wire and all the places that I'm listed and making sure that all of my connections across the board are consistent with ever how you've got it set up on your website, be consistent across the board. So if your website has no WW, ditch it. If it does have WW, put it in. Keep it. That's really good advice. Thank you for sharing that, Celicia. And okay. I'm going to go a step further too. Google likes consistency. So if you're doing Google My Business, little things make a big difference. Did you capitalize your W? Is it lowercase W for West Side or East? Did you put a period after the W for East or did you not? Those types of consistency really help boost your uh, SEO um, power on Google. And we're going to have a a uh, webinar and a course uh, about search engine optimization just for notaries coming out uh, a little closer to September too. So we'll really dive deep on that. Thank you so much for sharing, Celicia. Uh, Dolce, thanks for being here. You want to unmute? Tell us what state you're in and what's your question? Hi, um, my name is Dulce and I am in California. Um, my question is, is it recommended? I know we talked a little bit about mobile printers, but I would say see um ask if there's something more compact 
Um, the reason is I keep getting a lot of signers who don't have a printer or copier for their ID. Um, and I know from Carol's course that we're not, you know, we shouldn't be taking pictures. Um, I know that the iPhone, I've seen a lot of threads on Facebook that say use the notes section because there's a scanner there, but then that also saves it to your actual files on your computer. Um, so I just, and now I've also had, I know that uh, the recommended is, well, just have the signers email, but then they don't do it. And I've gotten, you know, negative feedback from the signing service because they're saying it's my responsibility as it's stated in the instructions. Um, so it's just, it makes me nervous, but maybe just, I'm thinking the only solution would be mobile, a compact mobile printer. I don't know. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. And they make some of those little small HP things that you might be able to work something like that out on for sure. I don't know, but this would be great for people in the chat. Carol, Laura, have you heard any solutions like that? Oh, crickets. <laughs> well, I, I, I haven't. I really, it's, it's a big problem. I just usually tell the graduates that when they call uh, and to confirm the appointment that they uh, need to ask these people to one way or another make copies and have it ready for them at the table. Uh, make copies of their ID. And just a reminder, military people cannot make copies of their uh, identification any longer. We require DD-214s on the discounts that we give to military personnel, but they can't even make copies for themselves. Yeah. Yeah, because even um, most of my, well, because I'm new, uh, most of my assignments are like last minute. I have very few that are scheduled ahead of time. So I do ask, but they still don't have it ready or they don't even tell me when I'm over the phone. They don't even tell me that they can't even get to it. Um, so yeah, that's just the problem that I've been having lately. You okay. might have to ask them to get it and send it directly to escrow. Like do it in front of me because they're not doing it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. If they want to take on the liability, they can take a picture with their phone and they can send it if they want to take that liability or upload it to a secure portal. But you just, you just don't want to be the one to send it. Correct. Okay. Great. Hopefully there, somebody in the chat window might have some suggestions if you've uh, come up with any. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Dulce. All right. Looks like uh, Miss O, the mobile notary. Welcome. Go ahead and unmute. Tell us what state you're in and ask your question. Hello, I'm in Tennessee. My question is for um, Laura. Awesome. I, um, I, I know what's going on with COVID and everything. It's hard to access the facilities for as a nursing home because I had planned on entering when I just entered this field that that would kind of be my niche that I was going to go for. It's like the facilities and hospitals um, to support my social work background. Since we can't really get in anymore, I'm um, going to do a little kit with maybe a flyer and a business card. Would you recommend include, including a letter um, in that mm -hmm. mailing to them or would you do an email pre maybe post to follow up with with the contact well i mean i i think you could do either but uh, you could also be uh, even a little more creative in terms of setting up a zoom appointment with them uh, oh, so okay. you could talk still have that face to face just a little differently and talk about you know what uh, what's happening with their hospital and patients and status and uh, what you might be able to offer them uh, so that uh, you get you get that started and so I uh, it used to be I'd go in I'd ask for the right person I'd get in and talk with them face to face but I can't do that so uh, you know emailing to say hey can we have a virtual appointment so that I can still get face to face is uh, another way to go Okay, thank you. I didn't even think about that. That's amazing. Thank you. Great suggestion. Great question. Thank you, Ms. O. All right. Guy, thanks for being here. You want to unmute? Tell us what state you're in and ask away. Hey, Bill. I'm in Colorado. Are you Bill? <laughs> you look like Bill. You sound like Bill. Sort of. I know. Thanks. Thanks for bringing attention to my, my beardless face. I miss it. Uh, you look good. Uh, hey, I missed some of the early part on printer and copying at various places and so on, but um, this is a big issue, and, and I'd like to throw in a few comp comments about that. 
Number one, I heard you say something, make sure the people at the center like the copier they are using. And I have found that even with these big floor model copiers that Office Depot, et cetera, have, their speed of copying is about one fourth of what the brother printer that you mentioned is. It is astronomically slow. Hmm. One of the things I found is that on those big machines, when they're pick, printing mixed page sizes, it dramatically reduces their output speed. The other thing about page size that I've been having a lot of uh, involvement with is do the companies actually need mixed size documents? This started with a company that told me to only print one size, no matter how the documents have been scanned, and that printing in a letter size using fit to page was acceptable. I have asked numerous companies about that since this first happened, and I have only had one that said they actually require mixed size pages. So, Take it for what it's worth, leave what you don't like, take what you do like. But um, I'm finding that many of our customers are okay with just printing everything on legal size. I'm sorry, on letter size. And that then eliminates the difficulties of finding a printer that has a double tray um, and so on. It dramatically reduces the cost of printing as well. Um, I do use the brother printers. Uh, Carol, I heard you say something about the refurbished HP, and I thought you said to email Lori at notarytopro.com, and I tried that this bounced back to me. So could you verify if I got that right, please? Well, I'll tell you what, try notarytopro at gmail.com. It'll come to all of us notary to okay. pro at gmail.com and i want to add one other thing you have to be very very careful because every county uh, in every state across the united states has different requirements mm -hmm. uh in los angeles for instance i believe that it's uh, which is a huge county i believe it's eight and a half by 11 is required they won't record anything if it's a legal size they'll bounce it back so you have to make sure that when you print, that it's going to be compatible with what's uh, being recorded, uh, what the county recorders require. And that should yeah, be agreed. provided to you by the signing services or the title companies. Agreed. I think most of the pages who are, that are being printed on legal size are not recordable documents. And I find that many companies send them through as letter size and some send them through as legal size. But if it's a document that's not being recorded, um, that's, that's just my, my thought. Yeah, thanks for sharing that experience, Guy. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there, I think there's, there's two main template companies for these loan documents. And of course, there's other proprietary stuff, but a lot of them are, have been using the same template for 20 years. So we'll probably start seeing some revisions uh, as those come through, but still, from a professional standpoint, from an efficiency standpoint, uh, the, the overall um, goal here is to print as the documents get sent to you, exactly as that file is. And if you do get permission, because we run into snags all the time, if you get permission from the lender or the closing agent to print on differently, then there you go, you've got your permission for sure. Thank you, Guy. Welcome, Bill. All right, we'll catch you later. Tony, thanks for being here. You wanna, you'll be our last question today, Tony, and then we're gonna draw for some prizes here. So Tony, what state are you in and what's your question? Hi guys, uh, thank you. I'm in uh, South Florida. Right. And uh, I, I have a few questions. Uh, one regarding the oath affirmation. I generally do one for the entire packet. Is that okay? I, I'll say, now, um, at the end, just say yes, or I do, and then I go on with, uh, do you affirm all of the information contained in this document is true and correct to the best of your knowledge and belief? 
and then they say yes or I do, or should I do it for every single one? So Tony, that's a great question. So let's answer that real quick. So that's the, I've talked to several attorneys. Number one, attorneys who draft this paperwork don't even know that there's oaths required sometimes. So I've been, I've gotten several different opinions on this. That's the way I do it as well. Um, but Laura is our, like our, our in-house notary law expert and, um, She's got feedback that suggests otherwise. So Laura, tell us what you found out. So um, the deal is this, each certificate stands on its own. There's not one certificate that's for all the documents. So the certificate that requires the oath is the jurat, uh, and it is for that specific document, not for every document in the package. If you, in addition, want to start out the signing with, hey, by the way, uh, you know, you lie to me, you can go to prison because you know, uh, you're gonna be put under oath. Um, you certainly can forewarn them. Uh, you're not breaking any rules by giving it at the beginning, not a problem. But what I'll tell you is that the oath is specific to that certificate, to that document. It doesn't say, do you swear or affirm that all the documents in this package are true and correct. So my, uh, thought on that is that there's one expected for every document that's requiring it separately. Now I'm one person. Yes, I have a lot of experience with this. And yes, I have read the law on this for many states. It's the same thing. It doesn't mean that if you gave it at the beginning and there was a lawsuit later that they could say, well, I was never put under oath. If you were put under oath, you were put under oath. You know, and if you said it includes all the documents, then you're saying it includes all the documents. What my thought is, is, is compliance with how the law is written. Right. Oh. So I've had, uh, for example, um, a loan packet with maybe three notarizations, then I had one with 15. So I, you know, I figured if I could just do it once and cover all the documents, uh, instead of because oftentimes they, they don't even, you know, these signers, they, they like, okay, just get it over with. And, you know, I don't want to be sitting here all day. And uh, they, they get really antsy. I'd like to add something to this, if I may. Okay, I've been teaching my graduates for years to issue the oath and affirmation. This is very important. And going through the ritual, raise the right hand, make them no, this is serious business. Yeah. However, what I do, and I have been advising people, and I've never had anybody question or get in trouble, is as you come to a, uh, an affidavit or a document that requires them to take the oath or affirmation, I, I remind them every document, and I teach my, my students this, when you get to that document, you say, I just want to remind you that you are still under oath that you are saying that you're telling the truth or whatever on this document. And so every time you come to a document that requires giving an oath, you remind them that, that, that they are under oath. And if you are always consistent about what you do and you make notes in your journal, like I tell people, put a little O, write oath every time you do it. If you're ever called into court and you have to show consistency hey, I do it all the time, you're excused, they go after the person who's committed the fraud and you're out of it. Absolutely. That, that, that's a really great way to handle it. Absolutely. Tony, we have time for one more question. Okay, one more question out of the four that I had. <laughs> okay. We're already five minutes past, I apologize. Okay, uh, I just, uh, one thing that really just, uh, Okay, I, I have this signing company I've been working with for the past couple of months. They've given me, um, I think, over 100 signings. Uh, they've been wonderful. They pay every week like clockwork. They've been amazing. But I didn't find out up until the 80th, 80th or so signing that I didn't have to bring a second packet. They said, no, our, you know, we tell all our escrow people no, that they send the documents electronically. 
So you don't need to bring a second set of copies. Um, so now every time that I work for another company and I have to bring a second set, I just kind of like cringe. You know, I'm killing all these trees. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. I mean, the, the wasted resources, a lot of these people probably don't even look at these documents. Some have even told me, um, you know, don't even, you know, give me a copy because I have everything electronically uh, saved. Uh, but most people just probably put that away in a closet somewhere and never refer to it again. And they're blank pages anyways. Was this a requirement because of the faxing back in the old days? Because most of these documents are scanned back anyways. And I can see if you make a mistake, it's convenient to pull out a copy. But, you know, well, still, I'd rather drive back than to have to print an entire document. Yeah, every single time for sure. Tony, what you're doing here, this is a great example of applying logic to a very illogical industry sometimes. So I don't know why they did it. Um, you're right, the, the value is sometimes you can pull if you make a mistake, but that's a lot of paper to waste for the potential of a mistake. It's just sometimes it's the rules, sometimes it's not. What I love is my clients usually don't require it either anymore. So I think we're moving in that direction as this industry embraces technology, but Right now, that's just the way it is. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, because it, it just, uh, I'm like thinking about all these wasted resources and uh, it's something that will never be looked at. Again. It will be soon. I, I think we're, I think we're kind of moving there. Like I said, I think it's a technological uh, advancement. So great questions, Tony. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you being here. And if I can help you on those other two questions, shoot me a text message. I'm happy to do it. Okay? I do believe we have a one-on-one -on -one coming up. Oh, beautiful. Even better. All right. <laughs> thank good. you so much. Appreciate Thanks, Tony. it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being here and growing yourself and your business on the Tuesday afternoon. We are going to draw for some prizes now. We saw, got some really good ones here. Carol's donated a Notary 2 Pro full course. Laura has donated a full lifetime access to Laura Viewer Presents. And I'm going to give away three of the Sign and Thrive books. Uh, the link is in the chat window. If you're listening and you don't have access to the chat, it's notarycoach.com forward slash prize. And I'm going to just say that really slow. And so I can look at the form here. See how many people are on here. Okay, so we've got 162 people who have registered for the first prize. All right, so this is going to be for a Sign and Thrive book. Number 104, give me one second to get to 104th person. Two, three, four. Four, Shion Stevens. Shion Stevens, you are the winner of the Sign and Thrive book. I will sign that and send it off to you. If you would please email me at orders at notarycoach.com. Actually, I've got your email so I can follow up with you, so I'll find you. No worries there. All right, we're up to 176 people now. Let me change these numbers real quick. All right, let's do another book real quick. Before we get to the really good stuff, uh, number 54, bear with me one second. All right, Miriam Cortez. Miriam Cortez, you have just won a Sign and Thrive book. Feel free to or email me at orders at notarycoach.com with your address if you'd like. Otherwise, I'll track you down. And finally, one more book. Let's see, what are we up to here? Now we got 190 people signed up for this thing. Let's see. All right, number eight, good. Nice slow number for me, but I still have to go backwards. Bear with me one second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Rita Malone, Rita Malone. You are the winner of the final Sign and Thrive book. I'll get that signed and shipped out to you. If you would, please email me your address at orders at notarycoach.com. All right, guys, let's do 
Laura Buer presents lifetime access to the best training for general notary work or specialty notary work on the internet. All right, let's see what we got here. Now we got 198 people. I'll do that. Number, oh, all right, it's number 196. So bear with me, I have to go through a few screens oh. there. So somebody brand new. Uh, let's see, that's number 100. All right, so we got one, two, three, four. All right, Mary at Rotary Notary, Florida. So I only have your first name, but it's Rotary Notary, Florida. Oops, let me put that here. Mary, Rotary Notary, congratulations, you just won the Laura Buer Presents. I'll be happy to credit that to your account. If for some reason you already have Laura Buer Presents, hit me up and we'll get that squared away as well. All right, last prize. This is the full Notary to Pro course. And now we have 205 people for this one. Number 69, bear with me, I gotta go backwards now. So, Denise Jensen, Denise Jensen, you just won the Notary to Pro full on course and mentoring with Carol Ray. Carol, if she, how does Denise get a hold of you? Uh, I posted in the chat. It's our phone number. Call nine one six seven 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 five nine three one. But Denise, aren't you already? A I'm I've taken your course. I loved it. Can I donate it back to you to give back to someone else? Uh, if you'd like to do that, or if you have somebody that you'd like to give it to. I don't know anybody here locally by oh, me, right. but I would love to have someone be able to take advantage of your course. It, it was a great course and I loved it. Thank you I'll very much. It. Well, Bill, let's do yeah. it again. All right, we'll do another one here. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Thank you so That's very generous. Great back. day today. <laughs> All right, okay, number 61. So this should be easy as well, so. All right, Miriam Cortez, Miriam E. Cortez is the winner of Notary 2 Pro, Miriam E. Cortez. And that is exactly how you registered, Miriam E. Cortez. I've seen a couple Miriam Cortezes. I don't know if they're the same person or not. So Miriam E. Cortez, that's MC at servicegvs.com. You are the winner of Notary 2 Pro full is course. Is she on? Is she on right now? Oh, Miriam, are you here? Miriam. I think she's a student. Yes, thank you. Hi, Miriam. Are you already a student of Notary to Pro? No, yet. All right. Oh, yes, okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Miriam, did thank you get the phone number? No. Can I have it? Yes, you may. 916-777-5931. And if you get the, our answering service, because we can't keep up with the phones lately, uh, just leave a message and we'll call you back like right away. They, they, they email me right away. Thank you so much. All okay, right. I'll look forward so much, to guys. Thank you. Bye, everybody. All right, Carol, thank you so much. Laura, thank you so much. Really appreciate you guys. And thank you again to everybody who showed up today. You have a great week. We'll see you next time.